This question I get a lot from colleague doctors, from physiotherapists and from patients to give an update on the anterolateral ligament now exactly 10 years after we have first described it in the Journal of Anatomy and how it has changed the worldwide understanding of ACL injury and which, from the early moments after our publication, has received a lot of attention over the globe because it had such a drastic impact on how we treat ACL injured athletes today. As a matter of fact, since our publication in 2013, more than 1,000 peer-reviewed papers have been published on the anterolateral ligament by doctors and scientists from all over the world. And probably its biggest impact is that, since this knowledge on the anterolateral ligament has become available, the way on how we operate ACL ruptured patients has changed so dramatically to the positive that the re-injury or re-rupture rate after ACL reconstruction has now decreased from 12 to 15 percent to only 2 to 3 percent, which is really a dramatic improvement. So let's start with the beginning. The anterolateral ligament, or ALL, works in close conjunction with the ACL, the anterior cruciate ligament, and the ACL consists of two bundles, the anteromedial bundle and the posterolateral bundle. Actually, you see this very well during surgery, where you see here the anteromedial bundle, it runs anterior and medially, as the name says, and the posterolateral bundle, which runs posterior and laterally. Now, we know for a long time already that the anteromedial bundle protects the knee against anterior tibial translation, like here. The posterolateral bundle protects the knee against tibial rotation, like during a pivoting or twisting movement. For example, when the athlete suddenly changes direction while running. Now what is important is that the anteromedial bundle, which protects against anterior tibial translation, is quite effective in this task, that is protection against anterior tibial translation, because it is in the ideal biomechanical location and its fibers are oriented in the right direction for this protection. The posterolateral bundle, however, which protects against tibial rotation, is not so effective. Its fibers are oriented in the right direction, that is not a problem, but the location of the ligament is far from ideal, because it is in the center of the knee, so it can never be a very effective protector against rotation. An effectively protecting ligament against such rotation would be located somewhere here, at the periphery of the joint. And indeed, that is exactly where the anterolateral ligament is located, and which helps the ACL's posterolateral bundle in its protection against rotation. And as a matter of fact, of the two, the anterolateral ligament is even more effective in this protection than the ACL's posterolateral bundle, as I will demonstrate in a moment. In our original study, we have described the exact location and dimensions of the anterolateral ligament in 41 cadaver specimens that were dissected by Stephen Klaas and assistant colleagues from our group. Here, we demonstrated that the anterolateral ligament has an oblique course from the lateral femoral condyle to the anterolateral tibia, with firm attachments to the lateral meniscus, and enveloping the inferior lateral geniculate vessels, and clearly distinguishable from the thin joint capsule lying anterior to it. Here you see some examples from the dissections. And the good thing is that the anterolateral ligament is also easy to visualize on MRI. Once you know where to find it, you cannot miss it. And that is important, because whenever you see a torn ACL on the MRI, you really need to look for the integrity of the anterolateral ligament. Because we have demonstrated in a study on 350 ACL ruptured athletes, that in 79%, so almost 80% of these, the anterolateral ligament was severely damaged as well. Which is quite logical if you understand how the ACL and the anterolateral ligament work together and therefore often get injured together. Here you see an example of an athlete with an ACL tear and a severely stretched out anterolateral ligament, which is so stretched out by the injury that it is no longer functional. And if your surgeon then decides to operate only on the ACL and do nothing about the ALL damage, then your ACL re-rupture rate will be 12 to 15%. Whereas, if your surgeon had decided to reconstruct the anterolateral ligament as well, then your re-rupture risk would have been reduced to only 2-3%. The reason is that the anterolateral ligament helps the ACL to protect against rotation. So if the ALL is not functional, the ACL has to do the job on its own, and it is just not strong enough or effective enough for that, and may re-tear. 
So how, in fact, did we find out that the anterolateral ligament is so important in controlling rotational stability of the knee? Well, that is done by what we call selective cutting experiments. In such experiments, fresh cadaver specimens of the knee are used to measure very precisely the changes in stability or laxity while executing step-by-step -step transactions of certain ligaments in very specific sequences. And what we saw was that the anterolateral ligament is indeed even more important than the posterolateral ACL bundle in protecting rotational stability. You can see that here. Let me explain. When we transected the ACL's anteromedial bundle, nothing happened with rotational stability. Logical, because the anteromedial bundle has no role in protecting rotational stability. But if we cut also the posterolateral bundle, the rotational laxity of the knee increased. Logical, because we knew that already, that the posterolateral bundle provides rotational stability. So if you cut or tear it, the rotational laxity of the knee increases. But if we then, in addition, also transected the anterolateral ligament, the knee became super lax in rotation. If then, in a second set of experiments, we started with transecting the anterolateral ligament and leave both bundles of the ACL initially intact, we saw that even with both bundles of the ACL intact, the rotational laxity of the knee immediately increased substantially after cutting just the ALL. And as a matter of fact, if next, we also transected the anteromedial and posterolateral bundle, no further increase of this rotational laxity was noted. So the conclusion of these two sets of experiments was very clear. The anterolateral ligament helps the posterolateral bundle of the ACL in providing rotational stability to the knee. And even more so, of the two, it is the most important stabilizer. We therefore call the anterolateral ligament the primary restraint towards rotational instability. So to summarize, for rotational stability of the knee, we have true restraints or protectors, if you want, that help each other and of which the anterolateral ligament is the most important. And this conclusion explains a lot of things that we did not understand in the past, when we did not know yet about the anterolateral ligament and its importance. For example, we did not understand why some patients with ACL rupture do well without ACL reconstruction, even at pivoting and rotation tasks. We did not understand that because we always had believed that the ACL is the only protector against rotational stability. So why are they still stable? Now we know why. Because in these patients, their ALL has remained intact and provides still adequate protection against rotation. We also did not understand why some patients with ACL rupture initially still feel relatively stable, but gradually become more unstable if they are not operated. Now we know why. Because in these patients, their ALL initially still provides adequate protection, but gradually stretches out and fails under the continued torsional loads, since it misses the help of the ACL. We also did not understand why some patients, even after successful ACL reconstruction, do not feel 100% as stable as before. Now we know why. Because in these patients, their ALL was initially damaged as well and left untreated and therefore they solely relied upon their reconstructed ACL's posterolateral bundle for rotational stability, which is insufficient since you also need a solid ALL for adequate rotational stability. And finally, we also did not understand why so many patients, 12 to 15 percent, re-tear their well-reconstructed ACL again after the operation. Now we know why. Because in these patients, their ALL was initially damaged as well and left untreated and therefore they solely relied upon their reconstructed ACL only, which is not strong enough to do the job on its own, and therefore has a high risk of re-tearing. So with this, I have explained the importance of the anterolateral ligament and how crucial it is in the setting of ACL injury and treatment. Thank you for watching.